Welcome Tuesday Review listeners to another flashback episode. I'm James. I'm Nathan. And I'm Callum. And this is a re-upload of our old solo A Star Wars Story review, which we did in May 2018, joined by Alan in this one, along with Callum and Nathan. And yeah, I thought, you know, obviously with the other Star Wars re-uploads that I've been doing, we should uh, include Solo. This was a short hour episode. We didn't go really deep dive long into it, but I think we got through all the problems with the movie and, you know, um, and how much I I didn't like it. But, you know, I think it's important uh, to sort of go along with the overall Tuesday review yeah. Star Wars uh, episodes. Um, but yeah, I really hate that movie. It's just not a, it's not a good movie. It's not a good Han Solo movie. I think that's that's the big yeah. the big problem. Like it just has shit in it that shouldn't have been there. I know Callum liked it. <laughs> yeah, look, it's best of a bad bunch. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing. Is it's like it's not as insulting as the Last Jedi, but it's still just a really terrible film. Yeah, like it's interesting because like in, in the episode we actually talk about rebooting Man vs. Movies and eventually it turned into the Tuesday Review. So We're not all talk. <laughs> yeah, it did happen. It, it took us <laughs> six months, but it happened. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, like I uh, hope you enjoy this solo review, capping off our re-uploads, uh, flashback episodes. And yeah, it'll inform our larger discussion in the future. So they are rough. Discussion. They are rough, but please listen. Yeah, we've come a long way, but uh, I think the content, like we said on the other episodes, is is important. Um, and in, you know, it will inform our Rise of Skywalker review yeah. and so on. Um, and ties into our Star Wars discussions, which you are, we we always have on the Tuesday review. So yeah, hope you enjoy this flashback episode. Sound the alarm. Welcome to another episode of Man Vs. Movies. I'm your host, James, and on tonight's show, I'll be reviewing Solo, A Star Wars Story. I'm joined in the studio by Callum, Nathan, and Alum. How are you going, guys? Not bad. How are you? Not Good. bad. Not too bad. Um, a lot to get through, so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, I'm going to start off with no spoilers, um, and then we'll segue into spoilers later. So, Solo, of course, I've talked about this movie before. I've talked about Star Wars a lot on the show. Um, I think everyone at this point knows my opinions if you've heard the show before. But with Solo, uh, I think it's common knowledge now that uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, were, who were originally directing the film, were almost finished principal photography before they uh, left over quote unquote creative differences. Um, or, you know, were probably fired. And Ron Howard stepped in and apparently reshot 70 to 80% of the movie, depending on the source. Um, so, yeah, it, it's similar to, you know, the Rogue One situation where they reshot a lot of um, that movie as well, but the director kind of stayed on, if only in name, in that, ca- in, in that instance. You know, and there there was like reports that uh, Alden Ehrenreich, who plays Han Solo, was getting um, acting lessons and stuff like that. But I think a lot of it was um, just trying to, you know, bring back the film to, you know, probably, you know, I think they wanted to bring it closer to maybe Harrison Ford's performance. Um, whereas, you know, Phil Lord and Chris Miller apparently were going more broad with it. Um, I would have been interested to see what they did because mm. I like them as filmmakers. And, you know, it, 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 pretty much every movie they've done, you know, like 21 Jump Street and the Lego movie and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, like on paper, all of those were terrible ideas. But once they're done, like they're all, you know, I, I think, you know, they would have done an interesting job. And I think um, Ron Howard does does fine with the movie um, and a lot of the choices and casting and crew and visuals uh, were already decided by uh, Lord and Miller. And so, yeah, uh, you know, it's hard to call it a Ron Howard movie. It's not a, it's not a Lord and Miller movie either. It's a Disney uh, movie. I it's mean, a, you raised an interesting point when they said uh, apparently Alden was getting acting lessons. Yeah, what? well... Sounds like exaggeration. You, you, well, well, it's it's see, it's it's common practice. You know, it, it's not like out of the realm for actors, even professional actors, to get acting lessons from a coach to sort of center their performance to to kind of to see the film. to see yeah to see which direction they want to go in because you know an actor doesn't just say the lines; they pick a direction they want to take the character in. Um, and I think Lord and Miller wanted it to be a more broad 
more maybe more humorous take and then when Ron Howard came on they tried to bring it back to a more straight Harrison Ford impression I think Alden Ehrenreich does a good job but yeah like um but anyway the movie uh that we got is a quote-unquote heist movie with uh Han Solo a young Han Solo I didn't really feel that the heists were particularly well done or important there's no intrigue no planning no tension um, so I wouldn't really call it a heist movie. It's kind of just a generic, formulaic action movie set in the Star Wars universe. Um, uh, man, I don't know. There were heists in it. There isn't were that heists all, in it, but isn't that all you, the movie is centered around heists. Isn't yeah, that all that you really the, need the to heist as a heist movie? Not really. The heists have to be part of the... Well, we, we, this is supposed to be Ocean's Eleven's <laughs> levels of heists, you know? Well, you know, I, I'm not saying having them roll out blue... Do you want blue, them to make a trilogy? I mean, th- and, then, and then make a female spin-off. They, as they've, well. they've, um, they've signed. They've signed. Uh, so, well, the next one's going to be called uh, Duo. I know that Alden Ehrenreich has signed on for three movies, but I think that's f- just for safety. It's like if this movie does really well, then they can do two more. Um, but you know, they'll just uh, apparently this movie's not doing near as well as it needs to. Well, Star Wars um, fatigue. Exactly, and uh, as we'll discuss later, it's like no one really wanted this movie, even diehard Star Wars fans. Yeah, so one of the major problems I have with Solo is that it's all grey and brown and more grey. It's very dark. I couldn't see a damn thing. That was disappointing. Yeah, like there are parts in the movie where I was like, this would be really cool if I could see anything. It is pitch black um, and just the the colour palette is just... They pick a colour, grey, brown, maybe blue, maybe lighter lighter brown, and just the whole scene is just that. And it's really it's just pitched down to to darkness. Um, the movie is for me was long, too long. It didn't need to be this long, um, and you could feel it. It lacked tension, um, and I was just bored the whole time. I also was not emotionally affected, and didn't care what happened to any of the characters, even Han Solo, even Lando. Um, you know, I talked about this on another Star Wars episode where it's like, even though I know and love these characters. I don't care about them anymore. But, I mean, they don't do a good job of making you care about characters. I mean, characters, you say that you characters. don't care about a couple of the characters like Han and Lando that you know survive into the original trilogy movies. It's hard at some level to keep the stakes really high when you know that these characters continue on. And that's a prequel. That's a, that's a problem prequel with all problem. prequels. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we know these characters continue on in the next movies. So we, we like we're not obviously it's like we're confident that they're not going to die in this movie. Exactly. Like yeah. the stakes aren't really that high. Yeah, but everything works. But out. even the newer characters, who you know, we don't know if whether you know how important they're going to be, whether they're going to live or die. It's just I just didn't care. I'm like, who's this guy? I didn't even know any of the characters' names until halfway, maybe two thirds of the way through. I was like, I don't care about any of these people. Um, also, another problem with, with prequels in general and, and the prequel trilogy of Star Wars especially is that for such a big universe, for such a big galaxy, everything sure is really small. Everyone knows each other. Everything's connected. Everything kind of loops back to the original characters, you know? But I feel like, I mean, everyone knowing each other, especially in smuggler circles, might be more common than we think. Yeah, but it's we're a in problem the, we're with the... all the Star Wars movies that have come out. It is, but in this movie, I can kind of see why that... Is more likely to. I, look, no, we'll, no, no, we'll, no. When, when we get when we get into the spoilers, yeah. I'll actually pinpoint points where it's literally like this doesn't need to be in the movie. They're doing this so they can connect it to another movie or to do a call. Oh yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Like there are that. points like that. Yeah, but I'm saying like in a, in a universe where it's like they have light speed, all the smugglers probably know each other because distance isn't a factor. But the original Star Wars felt so huge. Even though I've discussed this before, it only takes place on two planets and the Death Star, roughly. It felt huge. This galaxy felt huge. Like traveling felt like it took a long time, even with light speed. You know, the the, the amount of of different races you see and, and the different people they they encounter, like it felt huge. And now it just feels every Star Wars movie since the originals, everything just feels smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, at times watching Solo, I felt like I was watching a Netflix movie or a no, Netflix show. No, but I, I agree with that point. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, it feels I, very, like, it's maybe higher budget, but it, it just feels very, yeah, you know. I, I went with James to see it, and I, I, he leaned over, and he's like, it's like I'm watching a TV show. Yeah. And I'm like, and I, I said to him, I'm like, well, it's like, it's a bit high budget, and then James is like, maybe a Netflix show? Yeah. I'm like, that's right. Exactly. Because there were some of the shots, it, it really did just feel like a Netflix original. Yeah. Um, 
in less than. It's, it's very guess, workman like. It has a shot, reverse shot. Like it's just not. That I'm saying it's a bad. The pa- thing, yeah, the pacing like, is you know. It, it kind of did feel a bit like a TV yeah, show. Yeah, I was just like, this doesn't feel like the epic grand scale of a Star Wars movie that that we should be feeling. Um, I didn't find this movie funny at all. The humor that was in it was very forced, and I didn't appreciate a lot of the jokes. A lot of the jokes felt very. Almost like they were out of Rebels, you know, the, the show. Like, it felt very kiddie bullshit joke. Like, I was not on board with a lot of the, the humour. I, I thought the humour was much better than the humour presented in The Last Jedi. And yeah. Something like, it, it didn't seem to me to be based around that kind of uh, question authority uh, yeah. kind of humour. Like that, am I talking to the Hux or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it wasn't that bad and it wasn't that childish and silly. But there were definitely points where I was like, this feels very kiddie. Um, and a lot of it just felt forced. Um, it is a Disney movie, though. Yeah. Um, there's also, of course, like we were discussing, like unnecessary callbacks and Easter eggs, and just they don't they don't really stop the film to say, "Hey, here's this," like Rogue One does. But it does, you know. There is a lot of callbacks and and uh, references to older movies. Um, in terms of performances, everyone's f- just fine. Just it's very flat. Just who cares? Like Alden Aaron Reich as Han Solo, he. He does fine. He doesn't. He doesn't screw it up. Um, he doesn't completely just do an impression of Harrison Ford, which is good. I guess he brings a little bit to. Uh, I feel like, of himself I, feel like to were, it. I feel like he tried his but, best to yeah. some of the mannerisms. Yeah, of but but uh, you know, it's just a fine. Everyone's fine. Woody Harrelson's character Beckett, who's kind of like a mentor to Han Solo, he's fine. Like he's just Woody. Like it's fine. Um, Amelia Clark, who's kind of uh, Han Solo's love interest, Kira, she's fine. Everyone's just fine. You know, just flat. I mean, there, there were some weird writing moments between those two characters that we're going yeah. to in the spoiler section. Yeah. I, fe- I feel like... I mean, that was the sort of one issue where there might have been, like, you can sort of tell them maybe reshoots or... Maybe, yeah. I'm not, I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, I, I think this movie uh, is very flatly written and a lot of boring lines. So, a lot of the times when characters are talking to each other, it just feels kind of stilted and strange because the, the just the lines are not good and... So, you know, and everyone's a fine performance, but it's just kind of like, you know, the, the scene just isn't gelling. Um, Charles Landino, Donald Glover as Lando, he's fine. Like, we were, we were all really hyped for him. The accent um, was interesting. He definitely does, at, at some points, you can see him stop acting and just do an impression of Billy D. Williams. And um, it's not terrible, but you can definitely see him, like, stop in the middle of the scene and go, like, okay, I need to get Billy D. Williams inflections and start talking. Yeah, I just, I would have felt it would have been better if he kind of didn't try to do the impression and tried to bring a little bit of himself to the role. But again, this is a problem with, you know, prequels and trying to play a a well-known character, you know, a younger version. Um, But Lando does disappear for a a chunk of the movie and, you know, I would have liked to see more of him. I I think they could have developed him more as well. There are a couple of good moments, but I feel like they did waste his character a little bit. Yeah, I I think... um, one of the worst parts of this movie and one of the parts that pisses me off the most is um, Lando's co-pilot, who is a female robot. Who was she voiced by? Uh, Phoebe Waller... Phoebe, the voice Phoebe is really Waller-Bridge. To me. The voice is From really Game familiar. of Thrones? No. She, she seems so, like she'd be um, the, the, so, the actress that plays Gwen yeah. Tarth. Um, yeah, so, so yeah. He, here's what I want to say first. Her name is L337, which is Leet speak for Leet. This is where they lost me. I'm like, this movie sucks. I hate everything about this movie. Wait, okay? I thought it was this L3. So I was like, Leet? No. So, so it's just horrible bullshit that I had. Now, Phoebe Waller-Bridge sounds like Gwendolyn Christie, who plays Brienne in yeah. Game, Game of Thrones, Thrones, and who also plays Captain Phasma. So this robot sounds like Captain Phasma, which is really <laughs> yeah. distracting. It's really distracting. Yeah, that's that's now, what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the yeah. only person that yeah. was now, yeah. now, I'm watching this movie, I'm like, man, that voice is familiar. Yeah. Now on top <laughs> of all this, as if this as if this crap wasn't bad enough, she's like a feminist robot who's hashtag woke. Um and she's woke bot. Yeah. And uh she's she's a droid rights activist. She's trying to free all the droids from enslavement. And it's it's unfunny, it's it's not well developed. We don't need this in a Star Wars film. Star Wars is a fantasy. We don't need to be talking about the rights of robots in the middle of a Han Solo movie. It just drags everything down. And it feels like a Futurama joke. It feels like a Futurama episode. I had this problem with The Last Jedi as well, where they tried to make a point about 
human rights and stuff and alien rights. And it's just like, this is a Futurama joke. There, there was a Futurama episode about, uh, I think one of the characters, Amy was dating Bender. Yeah, yeah. And there was a whole, yeah. People and it's like robosexual. Ro- yeah, robo-sexuals. Yeah, it's like this, they think they're being smart and funny and it's literally stuff that Futurama made jokes about 20 years ago. Like, they, they the people who write these movies are just completely oblivious to how to write, you know, a good... Uh, to good to good humor and uh, good scenes. Also, why is Lando hanging around with a robot? Like, shouldn't he be surrounded by cool? F- like, does he have no friends? Like, Lando's so lame in this movie. <laughs> he doesn't have like you don't see him talk. Like, it's anyway. Um, Paul Bettany as the sort of main villain Voss. I think he's wasted. Um, you know, I've talked about I like I like me some vision. I like me some vision, but yeah, Paul Bettany. He has like two scenes in the movie. I think one at the start, one at the end. Even though he's like the big bad, it's f- he's fine. Everyone in this movie is just fine. I feel like Paul Bettany tried his best. Yeah, I like I do, he definitely gives a good performance, but I'm just like in in the overall arc, you know, in the overall uh, uh, movie, it just is fine. I was just like, whatever. And I did like the special effects on his face. Oh, the, scra- the, the scra- scars. The scars. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in terms of little nitpicky things that I've discussed on other, you know, Star Wars episodes that I've done, you know, there's no classic alien races. I think apparently, oh, there a couple. apparently there's one Twi'lek in the background, but I didn't see it I personally. Didn't see, I didn't see it. All. Um, I saw one Rodian, the Greedo race, um, at the end. I saw one. I saw one of the aliens. They have like they have like that black um, mask yeah, thing. Yeah, he's ha- he's actually from Rogue One. He's not a classic. No, I've seen them trilogy. in the I've seen them in the old school video games. Mm, I think oh, that might have been. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that that might have been a different race because the one. Nah, bruh. Anyway, might um, be from the prequels. Da, da, da. Yeah, which I mean, I don't know if that counts as original race, but anyway, um, yeah. Uh, again, I don't need a whole bunch of them, but you know, stick a couple Look, of here and there. It's, it's the problem every time where after each film comes out, I'm like, yeah. are there Twi'leks? Because I, I feel like I feel <laughs> you, like you think like they've some, like erased them. Yeah, out of there's a existence. war against someone high up in Disney. Just straight up doesn't like the Twi'leks, yeah, and we're we're paying the price. It's Are a, they some kind of racial stereotype or something? It's though? A, it's, that might no, be the reason. It's as as we've discussed. It's like they don't really, really care about Star Wars. You know, they they just like I'll oh, do whatever. You know, it doesn't really matter about the the world building. Doesn't matter. Um, the one rule of Disney is can I make money? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like, will this make money? And will people? That's not a lie. Yeah, will people go to see it even if they don't like Star Wars? Which I think is the goal now. Um, the planets are boring. I don't really remember any of them. Um, I don't. I don't expect you know crazy out there planets. But yeah, I, you know, in terms of locations, it's nothing we haven't seen before in any sci-fi film. Um, they've also some, done something that really makes me sad, where they've made the Millennium Falcon boring. I'm just bored. When I see the Millennium Falcon now, and I don't feel anything. I'm just like, this is boring. This ship is boring. It's like any other ship. Yeah, I I wasn't like pumped up when I saw it. I was yeah. just like, oh look, yeah. It's the Falcon. I was like, oh yeah, oh, it's it's slightly cleaner, you know. Um, this is a problem with all of the new Star Wars movies, but this one was especially bad. Is the blasters sound very weak? They're not. They're mixed down very low. And they also don't use the uh, original trilogy blaster sound. They they use a variation of it, but it's a lot weaker, a lot lower, and it just does not work for action scenes. And just, if, again, it feels like they're trying not to be like Star Wars. They're like, we won't have classic alien racings. We'll do all the we'll do all the references and the wink, wink, nudge, nudges, but we won't have the classic sound design. We won't have the classic music, you know. The music is perfectly whatever in this movie it was everything you know fine the only good bits are when you get the original trilogy uh reprisals you know reusing that music and that they're the only memorable parts of the music two things i did like costume design pretty cool um rogue one i liked you know the costume design in that as well i like a good star wars jacket you know can capes make a comeback generally yeah i mean no i I think it's like fedoras it's like they were cool but now it's just like no (laughs) um but yeah like just uh i think you know that 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 element of it you know I, i think they do a good job um and chewy i think he's pretty cool in the movie he has some good moments but as I mentioned, it's like I leaned over to Nathan where there was one specific action scene with Chewie and I was just like, this would be really cool if I could see what was happening. <laughs> it was like pitch black and Chewie was like running around and I'm just like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think Chewie's good and uh, 
I think the best parts of the movie are his chemistry with Han. It definitely feels like the original trilogy. I hope so. Uh, yeah, it feels like the original trilogy chemistry. Where all the other jokes fell flat, the classic joke of Chewie roaring something and Han replying, those almost always worked. Just to wrap up, like, one of our friends, Julian, he's not a Star Wars fan. I don't think he's ever seen the original movies. The prequels, he might, might have saw them, seen them when he was growing up, but he has no affinity for Star Wars. But out of all of us in this room, who, you know, me probably being the biggest Star Wars fan, Callum and Nathan probably being also huge fans, and Alan being a fan, I assume. A fan. A fan. <laughs> but anyway, like, out of all of us, out of all the friends we know, and he's, the, he's probably the least st- not a Star Wars fan at all, but he's the only one out of all the people we know who really wants to go see all these new Star Wars films. He wants to go and see them, like, opening night. And I accidentally so being went made for the filthy casuals. Yeah, and, and and I think that's fine, and I think that's great that people who never liked Star Wars before can enjoy these films. But I think this is where the problems, which we've discussed in the last Jedi episodes and other Star Wars episodes, where these movies aren't for fans anymore. They're for just whoever wants to have some explosions and some laughs. Like it's not a Star Wars movie anymore. It's a generic Disney action film. I mean, uh, I saw it with Julian actually. Yeah. Uh, accidentally on opening day yeah. because Julian said uh, do you want to go watch Solo I'm like sure I guess it came out last week I didn't know it came out the day we went we went to see it but uh, he liked it and I mean I liked it I mean I thought it was yeah. I thought it was just, I think yeah because my expectations were quite low yeah. I'm not going to lie as you said I wasn't excited like I wasn't going to line up and go see it opening night or go, even go on opening day yeah. I ended up doing that but not on purpose Yeah. I was just going to see it in a couple of weeks well, yeah. you know, or whatever um, none of us were really excited yeah for no the film. but I, I did like it. I'm like, I, yeah, it has problems. Yeah, but I, I feel like it's just it's a it's a, it's a fun adventure movie. I th- I felt there are yeah. problems, but I liked it. See, as, especially the things we've discussed. Mm. If this is just just had been an adventure in space, yeah, without you being tied to Star Wars, without being Han Solo, mm. I think it had a great chance of being a pretty good movie. Maybe, yeah. I think it still has a lot of problems. And, and, you know, like I've mentioned on other episodes, the reason I don't like the new Star Wars films isn't because they're bad Star Wars films. It's because they're bad films. And this one definitely has an element of that, where it's just not well, and this, you know, it's generic and it's not very well written. So, but I think it definitely, yeah, and it definitely <laughs> would have been better if it wasn't a Star Wars movie because you can automatically just start to do new things and you take away a lot of that. Baggage. I think the idea of space heists is, yeah. is pretty damn cool. But I think that's another problem that I was going to talk about is that you could replace, you, you know, if you called Han and Lando different names and called this movie Smugglers, like it's just a generic movie. Like this movie doesn't feel like a Han Solo movie. It's not a feels good like a Han Netflix Solo movie. It feels like yeah. a Netflix show. Yeah. yeah. They could have, like, they could have done a Netflix show for this. Exactly. Call it Smugglers, but, Star Wars yeah. Smugglers, and just. Yeah. Do, Han like, Solo, like, this doesn't feel like a Han Solo movie. It just feels like a generic action movie with some space smugglers who don't do a lot of smuggling. It's like a yeah. heist kind of. And there, there are, like, classic. Ha- Granted, this is outdated canon now. Yeah. But it's not like there weren't, like, Han Solo stories to draw from. You know, yeah, there's well, like a few of the original books, a few of the early yeah, ones, as, like Han Solo yeah. stories. As we've and discussed, then there's the Chewie stories and the, the Star Wars Christmas special, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were joking. It's <laughs> like Han, Han, Chewie had to get back to to his uh, to his family. Um, but yeah, like as we've discussed, it's like they threw out all of the the original expanded universe canon, which is fine. I understand why they did that. But what they're replacing with is generic and boring. And so yeah, they they need to start stepping it up in that regard. Um, I think the worst part of this movie is that I'm just not excited for Star Wars anymore. And that's the saddest thing that could ever happen. I directly blame Ryan Johnson. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he, yeah, he, he killed, like, <laughs> even, even, even Mark Hamill in an interview was like, I don't care anymore. Like, he sucked all the life and passion. I was going to say he doesn't care anymore. He's not part of it. Well, he can come <laughs> but, but, but I think, but I but think even. Be- that can be rejected, back, but though. but I think like that's it's just it's it's indicative of how we feel as fans. It's like who cares anymore? This isn't Star Wars. It's oh wait till the next reboot. <laughs> Will there be a reboot? Because the issue Maybe is forty years down the line, the damage has been done. I mean, we talk about we've talked about this in previous episodes, but the issue is all these movies are written fairly independently of each other. 
Yeah, for that's, instance, Rian that's Johnson, the thing. Yeah. For instance, Rian Johnson wrote this movie without consulting J.J. Yeah. Abrams or he did on the first They're, draft or whatever. We've discussed this in multiple Star Wars episodes. They're making it up as they go along. Yeah, so like we, we, we're sort of also <clears throat> talking about it in the context of them trying to set up a Marvel universe. Yeah. But at the same time, they haven't got that connectivity going that the Marvel exactly. Universe does. Yeah. So everything's well, just like throwing whatever they want into the movie and yeah. then nothing's working really well. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, the movie definitely feels like it was made by a committee and it feels mm-hmm. like a Disney Marvel type of movie. And at the end of it all, it feels kind of soulless. It doesn't have that same heart and soul as in the original movies. And I think like Rogue One as well, just the spin off movies are unnecessary. We don't need to see what happened. You know, we don't need to see these kind of prequels. And they don't add anything new to the Star Wars, you know, canon. Ideally, this film should have been a comic. And I know, like, that... Because what they did with the old Expanded Universe was all of these stories which weren't necessary to the cinematic universe yeah. would just be extra material for people who wanted to, you know, read extra stories. Yeah. So, whether whether you agree or not, as a general... Uh, thing like uh, some stories I agree should not be made but if you want that extra supplementary supplementary material yeah. go to the comics read the books whatever have you yeah. but Solo should not as much as I liked it and I did like it a lot yeah. it, not, it should not have necessarily been a film yeah and we didn't need to see how any of Han Solo you know how he got his blaster how this that and the other it's like it's unnecessary and I think all the prequel movies or all, all the spin-off movies that are going to happen uh, have the same problem um, this is the solo Star Wars story is better than the previous new Star Wars movies, but it's still not good. That doesn't make it good. It's still a bad movie. It's, it's, I mean, it's fine in areas. Like it wasn't as offensive as Last Jedi, and it wasn't as it wasn't as sickeningly just a kick in the balls. But it was just like, eh, you know, this doesn't need to exist. They need to really step up their game, especially if they're going to be doing one of these things once a year. Like and plus TV shows that are coming, so you know it's going to be it's already oversaturated, and we're not getting quality stuff out of it. Um, also, I didn't like how there were very few Western elements. We kept talking before the movie came out about how we wanted Han Solo to be kind of like a Western. I didn't get that feeling at all, um, and I think that's disappointing. Now we were talking, I think you know, in one of the early Star Wars episodes where. Rogue One would have been better as a kind of infiltration movie, heist movie, where they kind of have to pretend to be Imperials and kind of steal the plans. And then, you know, I think we were talking about how the Han Solo was movie was planned to be a heist movie, and so they stopped Rogue One from being a, a heist movie, um, which I thought was really bad. Like, you shouldn't stop a movie being what it should be because you might have another film in planning... Um, and I think this film isn't a Western and, you know, if they do plan to do a Lando movie and if like, if that's more of a Western, it's like, then that has to be a gangster movie. Well, I mean, here's the thing. It's like, it's going to be like a casino card counting movie. And here's the, here's <laughs> here's the thing. The that's the thing I was going to talk about is, have you guys ever seen Maverick with Mel Gibson? No. It's a really good Western, like, uh, but it's a, a, about like a, a like a, uh, a gambler who has to enter into this big, um, Wild West poker tournament and it has to, it's about him trying to make enough money to get into it and I thought that would make a really good Lando movie but I think like a Han Solo movie would be better as a Western like whatever they did here with the heist whatever it doesn't really work um, and as we mentioned it's like they're making it up as they go along so regardless of what happens after this um, yeah they just haven't rec- they haven't got the right idea about where they need to go with these kind of movies um, so we'll move on to spoilers now because we're running out of time very quickly. Uh, this is a major spoiler warning for Han Solo for Solo, a Star Wars story. Spoiler alert, he lives. Spoiler alert, <laughs> he dies in Force Awakens. Oh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, That's so the dog. This is a, well, I've said spoiler warning yeah, for, for a different <laughs> movie, but uh, anyway. So in terms of the action scenes... I don't know if it's my memory and, and because I was so bored by this movie that I'm already forgetting it, but there's only a few action set pieces and none of them were particularly great. So there's a speeder chase at the start, which is kind of cool, but I couldn't see what was going on. 
then you cut to Han Solo in World War One for some reason, and there's like shells going off. And... If, if you thought you couldn't see anything in the first scene, then yeah. you definitely can't see anything. Yeah, in this and scene. I'm like, this feels really out of place. But it's only a short scene just to introduce, and then then you get the train heist, which I thought would be the end of the film, but is actually the start of the film. That scene's okay, whatever. Then they go to the mines on Kessel. And well, hold on, in just quickly interjecting first. In yeah. this scene, one of the problems I had with this yeah. was uh, as a consequence of the train robbery scene, yeah. Woody Harrelson's character's uh, uh, partner, crew, yeah. crew, doesn't make it. Yeah. And his second, he's like, oh, that sucks. And then he's totally yeah. unfazed and then that, yeah. like, and, and punches... Han Solo in the face. Yeah, and then says, okay, sorry, well, let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's go. And, I'm, like, that, and that's, I'm going to talk about that very soon, about how after the train heist, this movie completely falls apart. Like, I didn't like it before this, but after this, it just doesn't know where to go. But I, I do feel Woody Harrelson's kind of reaction very much sums up the audience's reaction, because, like, I don't I, I don't care about this guy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but fun he's fact. like, fun fact, Julian was asleep during this part of the film, <laughs> oh and, then, and then I wake him up later, and he's like, where are those guys? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So they got like, X forced. Yeah. So like <laughs> the problem is, it's like they go on a little campfire scene. I've got a, like almost a western scene there, yeah. and they're like, it's important to have somebody. And Woody Harrelson's like, kind of like agree, you know, he's with his lady, and whatnot. And then she dies, and he's just like, eh. Yeah. I'm like, they sort of they build it up as you yeah. know everybody. And Han Solo, Han Solo is a character who doesn't really want a family. He doesn't really need a family. He's a he's a lone gun. He's he, got Chewy. He's yeah. He's he's a cool dude. He plays by his own rules. So that campfire scene where it's like you know we're a family. It's like no, you're not. Who cares? This this doesn't inform us of anything. It's, that's it's the happen. Disneyfication. Maybe yeah. It's bad writing. This movie's yeah, not. That's this movie's not bad, well. It's not like well. What, it's not well written. Yeah, that's the one scene. But I had anyway, a with. back to the action scenes. It's like then there's the mine escape where they free the Wookies, which is not a very good action scene at all. I don't think they they literally spend most of that action scene standing in front of the Millennium Falcon shooting at the bad guys who are shooting at the Millennium Falcon. Um, then they do the Kessel Run, which I didn't like. Um, and then there's like a little fight at the end with Voss, Paul Bettany's character. Am I missing anything? Because none of those are particularly engaging or, or well done. Or that's pretty much yeah. The, and I'm not saying this movie had to be more action packed. That's pretty or, much a very condensed yeah simplification of the film. I'm, yeah. I'm skip I'm skipping all the yeah. the story scenes and the dialogue scenes. Yeah, yeah, but in yeah. terms of the action, and the reason I'm highlighting this is because even when the action happens, it's kind of like I don't care. Like, I didn't care about the dialogue scenes because they're poorly written and the story isn't very good. But then you get to the big action scenes and you're like, why is this happening? I don't... This isn't well... You know, it's not well done. Um, also, the Sabak games, the card games, I thought those were boring as well. I would have thought that... There's no tension in this movie. The yeah. problem with all the new Star Wars movies, no tension. It should have been more, more intense. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I guess... You know, we don't know the rules of Sabak, but we can just assume that it's like poker. So we can just or automatically say, okay, if you know a little bit about poker, you can sort of guess what's happening. But the, they move so quickly and there's so many cuts and and you don't really get a sense that there's any stakes there. And that, I think they needed that in those scenes. They needed that in all scenes, even the dialogue scenes and especially the action scenes. So another thing I want to talk about is how Han's arc in the original Star Wars kind of requires him to be a bad guy. Yes. Um, he he's he's a scoundrel. He's a he's a he's a smuggler. He plays by his own rules. He wants money. He shoots first. He shoots definitely. But, shoot. I mean, but the, you say he wants money, but in this movie, he has and, a specific goal in mind. That's exactly. De that's and, definitely not Han. Yeah, sort of and, and and that's that's the thing is like the when when Han Solo comes back to help Luke blow up the Death Star at the end of the original movie. Spoilers. That's a big that's a big moment for his character. Like that's like a wall. Like he's changed as a character. He's he's become um so like less selfish, but this movie, it's because you know because I guess they don't want to make him too bad. That's my. It's like yeah he he he's kind of a he kind of a nice dude. He does the right thing most of the time. He's a bit cocky, but he does the right thing most of the time. As I said, I mean, as I said, and I will repeat. Like I like this film. Yeah. But the major problem I have with this film is they keep trying to beat you over the head with this line that there's good in him. Yeah. He's supposed to be good. They're trying to they're trying to turn Han Solo yeah. from a scoundrel, as I said earlier, into a guy who's good, yeah. but he's just rough around the edges, yeah. which is not who he is. No. So they're Disney-fying him yeah. for, and, and for their audience. Like, there's a scene where Han literally helps fund the rebellion by giving them the, the hyperspace fuel. When in A New Hope, he's, like, reluctant to even be around them. He's like, oh, give me my money, I'm going home. 
Like, and so it's like, it's a contradiction. Now, I think what they might have tried, have tried to have done is that they were trying to make the events of th- this movie solo be why he is more cynical because, you know, Beckett betrays him, Kira betrays him. And so that's why he's more cynical in the original movie. Then but they should I have written that movie. <laughs> but I don't think they succeeded. I think they failed if they were trying to do that. And I'm not even sure that's what they were doing. That'll be in the sequel, now, James. Yeah. And yeah. And <laughs> speaking of Kira, Amelia Clark's character, again, it runs fine in this movie. It's just like boring. It's just, but just a poorly written character. It's boring. Now, Han Solo's whole motivation for the first half an hour or more of this movie is that he escaped from his homeworld of Corellia by the skin of his teeth, but he had to leave Kira behind. And so his whole motivation is, I have to make enough money to get back to Corellia and save her. Then he bumps into her on this planet and she, he, she's like, he's like, I was coming back for you. And she's like, I know you were going to come back. Don't worry. And then they're, then they're fine. And his whole motivation goes out the window. So I will admit. Him, him, his whole motivation after that should have been trying to get Kira away from Voss, who seems to be her master or whatever. I will admit. And the movie completely massive, just falls off the rails. The coincidences. Like the, it's it, not even it's, the coincidence. It's like his whole motivation <laughs> is like getting her back. And it's just like, she's just there, now let's do the heist. That, and he's that, like, why is he invested in this heist? He's got what he wants, he's I got feel, her. But I feel like that could also be a contractually obligated appearance sort of issue. Because they're like, like I feel no, like no, she no. was almost... I'm, not saying, a, I'm no, not saying she can't be part of the movie. No, but no, if I you're going to write her as the motivation yeah. as, as to what Han needs to get done, and then just have her show up and then just go on the adventure with him. But I feel like she was almost written as a more minor character... No, I, I don't, I I don't think, think that at I, all. I think it's a poorly written movie mm. where Han Solo bumps into the character he's trying to save and then instead of having to go on this adventure trying to save her, they just go on a random heist I, with some I agree with crooks. James. I agree with James. Like, it's I, poorly written. I also wonder if there were more scenes designed to flesh that out that, that didn't make the final cut. Because mm, as, as you said, some of the scenes are kind of awkward. Yeah. So and, I'm but I think that's more material. Yeah, and I think that, that also ties into the fact that once they meet again and, and she's like, oh, don't worry, I knew you were coming back, let's be friends, it just feels very weird and awkward. And yes, you can say the reveal at the end where she quote-unquote betrays him, if you can even say that, like uh, maybe they're trying to set that up. But I think it ties into the fact that the movie's so poorly written that he should have been trying to save her or get her, get her away from Voss and trying to f- maybe find out a way to buy her back from him or whatever. And they just never mention any of that ever happening. And that's why everything feels very stilted and strange when when people are talking to each other, and especially Kira and Han. Because they never exactly discuss how she's kind of stuck with, what are they called, the Red Dawn? Um, Crimson Dawn? Crimson Dawn, yeah. Uh, Well, it's red, it is Crimson. Anyway, (laughs) like, she never really explicitly says to him how she's kind of stuck there and how she can't yeah, leave. Yeah, it's all very vague. Yeah, so She's, like, she has a brand on her arm that Voss, you know, assumedly branded her with, but they never mention if she's like a slave or... That should have been more of a part of the movie. Han's motivation for the heist shouldn't have been, I want money. It should have been, I need a way to get on Voss, uh, Voss's good books so then I can steal Kira or yeah, buy Kira or, that, or whatever. Perhaps she had a price that she like she was yes. worth. That he'd be like, I can do the yeah. highest pay. It should have been like Django uh, trying to get his wife back. Like there should have been <laughs> some intrigue there where it's Wilda. like. Yeah, uh, it's like, you know, trying to get her back in some way. I mean, even if it's in a silly roundabout way, it's kind of like, at least there's a motivation that's not just, I need some money. Why, why is he even there? Who cares? Also, um, tying in back to that thing where he's like, you know, he, he becomes a good guy and helps fund the rebellion. N- Nest, the the uh, bounty hunter uh, lady with the spiky thing. Uh, it's like, who's this? Like, comes out and comes out of nowhere during the train heist. And they're just like, oh, it's the Marauders. They're trying to steal the heist from under us. And you're like, okay, I don't know who that is. Then they disappear. Then Ness comes back at the end and tries to steal the hyperspace fuel again. And and then she takes off her helmet. And it's like a young girl. And I'm like, are we supposed to know who this yeah, is? Yeah, exactly. I was like, well, what's with the reveal yeah. now? And then and then she it's like it's and then she starts talking about how how evil the Empire is and and how they they destroy worlds and and she and her crew are. are joining the rebellion to fight back and i'm like this is some like bullshit it was like this is not a han solo movie they're trying to tie it back into rogue one they're trying to tie it back in it's like 
Where is the Han Solo ness? It's, <laughs> it's rebellion propaganda. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> also, the, Empire did nothing wrong. The logic <laughs> issue with that is because they're also trying to convince um, Woody Harrelson's character yeah. to to give them the the hyperspace fuel. Do they not you know remember the part where they killed? Or cause the death of, of his crew. Exactly. His crew. So yes. like, no, you know, we, we killed you guys and everything yeah. and ruined your mission. So can you and Woody to Harrelson's just like, okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> and it's just like, what? Like, it's, so, it's, a, it's a badly written movie, let's face and it. And the fact that they're trying to reason with bandits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another thing is, with these new spin-off movies, Rogue One and Han Solo and, you know, whatever comes next, Obi-Wan or whatever, there's no opening crawl, which I've talked about on other episodes, how that's stupid and Star Wars is a... Pulp Fiction style, not Pulp Fiction Tarantino, but Pulp, you know, action, yeah. serial, serial, action serial. And it needs that crawl. And it doesn't make sense that to dif- differentiate these from the numbered sequels, Disney's idea is we shouldn't have an opening crawl and the Star Wars fanfare. It's stupid. That's not what these spin off movies need to be different. But what they do do in Solo is have hey, opening dude. text anyway. They have blue text text it says a long time ago in a galaxy far far away in the blue text and then it keeps going with more blue text so it's like they have an opening crawl anyway what i said to you in the cinema was like they do better in blade runner if you're gonna do yeah, that yeah. it's just like why not have the crawl if you're gonna put that text anyway they again disney does not know how to make these movies they don't understand star wars but anyway then you get that lame ass cheap solo logo that's like a hologram anyway i don't like that anyway another thing i hate as if i didn't hate l3 enough as if she wasn't crap enough she dies, and Lando is like, no, and, and I'm like, who cares? I don't care about any of these characters. They could have killed Lando at this moment, and I still wouldn't have cared because of how badly this movie's written. But why should I care about this robot? Um, and then they're like, but she has the best navigational database in her brain ever. <laughs> this, and I'm just like, Ugh. Overt deus ex machina. Yeah, and, and, then, and then they're like, so we have to download her into the Millennium Falcon. And I'm just like... This is so stupid. She's a part of the ship yeah, now. Yeah, and I was just like, oh my god. Like, they're trying to explain something that doesn't need explaining, which is why the Millennium Falcon is quirky and is why they call it she and is why... Oh. And I'm like, they're doing the worst thing they could possibly do in a prequel. Trying to explain why they call a ship she. I thought it was... Which, all, a sh- ships all ships called, she... And I'm like, this is the worst movie. Like, what the hell? They're overthinking things. They should have cut... You know you know what would have been cool? If Lando had a brother and he died. At least then you would have been like, Lando, brother, equals automatic emotional attachment. Or, you know, maybe he has a sexy twi girlfriend or something who dies. Something, anything but this stupid, stupid character who doesn't need to be here. But, but also with the, the fact of... As you're saying, it's supposed to be... They're trying to go for an emotional response, particularly from Lando, because, well, L3 believes he loves her, and... You know, I, I think we're, they're fucked. We're, we're not going to... We're not... Well, I wasn't Which trying... another reason I hate I wasn't L3. trying to get into that. I wasn't trying to get into that, but <laughs> it's implied... Because now they make Lando this creepy... Uh, uh, <laughs> he likes well, yeah. Yeah. What two consensual adults do is none of your business. Yeah, okay, but fine. she's not well, an adult. She's not real. <laughs> she wants she's those rights, robot. though. She wants those human rights. The, the, the issue is, <laughs> so Lando really, really loves her, and yeah. now she's a part of the ship. Yeah. But he's happy to gamble her away. Exactly. Yeah. Then he like, just... He, he, yeah. he's a, he has a crippling gambling addiction. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this movie's really it, poorly written. Things don't make sense. It's like, yeah. why you do this? It's like, maybe if Han had an attachment to L3, then it's like, okay, I have to win that ship back or something. But it's like, no, that's Lando's... Literally, Lando's robot girlfriend uploaded into my ship, and it's like I'm gonna lose the the it to the. It's just so stupid. How about can, we, can I keep the good parts I like about the movie, and yeah. then just disregard everything that's bad? I mean, and I can still enjoy the film like I did before. Maybe it, we'll make a fan edit and just cut it down <laughs> to like a ten minute short film of all the cool stuff, uh, and we'll, we'll brighten it a bit. Cut we'll put out the all brightness the L3 up. Sections and oh, definitely. Someone's gonna blame you for yeah, it. Like, accuse you of misogyny or something. No, else? see, uh, no, robogyny. <laughs> sorry. See, I don't, want to, I don't want to be accused of being a sexist because I hate this really poorly written, stupid character. And the fact that the voice actor sounds like Wendell Christie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Again, it's really distracting. I'm like, why is Captain Phasma a robot now? Um, th- there was one cool scene that I liked right at the start I mentioned to James. Almost yeah. like a sort of like a Sin City noir-esque scene. Yeah. It's like almost black and white because the movie is so poorly lit. 
Where it's, it's like driving through the street. But you only see Alden, um, what's his face? You only see the, his face when he's driving. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, it was only for about like 20 seconds, but I thought yeah. it was a really cool like, Yeah, that moment. was like shadows going across yeah. his face while he's driving. Yeah, that was cool. Um, the Kessel Run was boring. Yeah. And I think a problem is, this is a prequel problem again, is when, when you talk up the Kessel Run, like, oh, my God, he made the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs, it's like you're hyping it up in your mind. You're like, what is it? Like, how, how hard could it possibly be? Like, is it impossible? And in the movie, it's like they have to go really fast in a straight line away from a black hole while a big tentacle monster tries to grab them. And I'm like, what is this? Like, and technically, he didn't even make the, the Kessel He lied about the time on the exactly. Kessel Run, which he, I thought he was Exactly. He also lied about the time. And also, again, in this L3 bullshit, it's like... He had to upload her navigational data just so they could get out. Like, why wasn't it about Han's knowledge of, and you if know... If we're being technical, the time that they were near a black hole, wouldn't relativity make sort of like... Well, I mean... So it was like, how fast did you do it, Han? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's like, does yeah. does re- does relatively, <laughs> relativity it doesn't exist in Star Wars? In Star Wars. No, but, it <laughs> but it's like, it's like this... The Kessel Run should have been this epic moment that people should have been talking about you know, but it's just like, ah, oh, whatever. I would have loved to see like an expensive scene of them like evading asteroids. It should or have whatever. been, you know. I think I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think in the original expanded universe, the Kessel Run is like in between a lot of black holes, like a series of black holes. So you can't use like. So yeah, you can't speed. just go in a straight line, is or that where you can't just. There's a military installation hidden in the Kessel system. Something like that, yeah. So it should have been something like that, where it's like. Yes, we can go around, but that's going to take X amount of time, and we have this hypership fuel, which hyperdrive fuel, which is going to explode because it's getting too hot, or whatever. Also, that that there was no tension in that, even though there was counting down to when they were going to explode. I was like, they have plenty of time. It goes I back to that problem care. because we know they, we yeah. know at least Han survives. Yeah. and survives, they don't do a good not, job of you know we know visually the, we know the million the Falcon doesn't blow up, yeah, yeah. so the tension's gone. So it's like they have that they have that thing. It's like we can't go the long way because we'll blow up. So it's like we have to get through the Kessel Run in the fastest time possible. That should have been the most tense scene ever. Like he's dip, you know, he's about to get sucked into a black hole, and then he's like, Chewy, you know, dump the fuel, and it's like dumps the fuel, and he gets blasted, and it should have been really intense. But it's a really boring scene, and that's kind of the thing with this movie. It suffers from a lot of pre- prequel problems, but also it's like we don't need to see any, any of this, and it's never going to be as good as it is in our minds. And so when you, a pre, it's a prequel problem in general. When you watch a prequel, you're like. Yeah, this is cool, but this isn't as cool as it was when I thought about it in my head. This isn't as cool as my own fan fiction, is what you're saying. Well, no, I mean, no, no. Uh, do you want to read some? I'll, <laughs> I'll post it to the members. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. It's also important that some of these things that they're making movies of, and this is going to happen with the Boba Fett movie, this yeah. is going to happen with the Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan movie. Yeah. Some of these events have already, in some shape or form, been portrayed in old fiction, yeah. and it was good. Like I remember reading some of some of the, like you know stories about Han Solo and being like, "This is good stuff," and, uh, you know. And now the the new stories we're getting, which yeah. might not be you know it's not the same timeline, yeah. but I feel like they it's the laziest option first. Exactly. It's not like yeah, what can we do that's creative that we haven't seen in Star Wars before? Exactly. It's Simple genres done in a... Sim- it might have come from a generator. Yeah. And that's what I said. As I said, I like this film a lot. Yeah. But it is boilerplate. It's, it's, it's boilerplate kind yeah. of it's uh, Disney adventure fi- movie. And it's Disney-fied. It's Disney-fied, fied, yeah. As Callum was saying, like, look at the Boba Fett movie. It's going to be Boba Fett working for free for and the Rebel probably, Alliance yeah, they'll probably make him capture a, a Sith. Yeah, they'll probably make him like a... And it'll be like all non lethal An anti All non like And the Sith's last name is Goldstein. Side. That's right. Look, <laughs> well, what, what did we say? It was like Han's real name sh- it was Han Leibowitz, but that's why he chose Solo, because it's like cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I I have high hopes for... Han, no, Hans Leibowitz. Yeah, Hans He's from the German Leibowitz. planet. Yeah, I, was... I have high In hopes the German for... system. As far as these new expanded movies go, yeah. I think that Solo is, one of the, is the strongest one so far. But I'm hoping that the Boba Fett one will be even better. I don't I know mean, that's a different subject. Yeah, everyone knows Boba Fett's my favorite character, and, Why? and I love him. Okay, I can't. That's, I can't actually go into it because it would take me 20 minutes. We, we, but no, 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 no Alan, Alan, Alan. In the second Star yeah. Wars special, I talk about it for a good 25 minutes. We'll and I'll, I'll actually anyway. I'll get on my phone and I'll play it for you, but I can't actually go into it. So if you want to know why Boba Fett's my favorite character, because he says nothing in those. No, we'll, yeah, we'll catch it, our it, love it, to I think it's, it's Star Wars Special Two. I can't remember exactly the number of the episode, but download that one if you haven't heard it. Um, we're running out of time, but we have to talk 
about spoiler, spoiler, spoiler warning. Darth Maul is in this movie. I, I literally swore in this. It was only me, Julian, and someone else in the cinema, and I literally swore out loud. Oh, I started laughing. Nathan, I started laughing uncontrollably. I'm like, this is before, the stupidest before movie. Before the movie, James goes to me, does any lightsabers in this movie? Yeah, okay. I'm going to be okay. so angry. Okay, so, so, so I, wanted, I wanted one movie without lightsabers. I'm like, can we please have one Star Wars movie where they don't have lightsabers? Like, Star Wars is such a big universe, we don't need everyone to show a lightsaber. Hey, Darth Maul the, shows the up. The lightsaber scene in Rogue One was pretty nice. Whatever, I don't care it about It was, that. was it not? It was badass. It Thank was you. badass, but I was like, in the movie, I was like, who cares? But anyway, so Darth Maul shows up. I'm laughing. I'm like, this movie's so stupid. I hate it. And he didn't even need to and, use and, his yeah, lightsaber. And then I'm like, okay, that's He's fair. just like, at, I'm at least, showing yeah, it for intimidation. At, at least, yeah, and then he puts it away. Again. At, at, at least there wasn't <laughs> any lightsabers. I'm like, okay, fine. Then he's in a hologram, right? Talking to Kira. He stands up and ignites his lightsaber in the hologram yeah. to sh- to show yeah. that she, he he's. Deep, uh, I mean business, scary. and then he puts it away again. And I'm like, it's, it's I for hate people. This movie. It's for people who don't know Star Wars, who don't like it. Yeah. So people who don't know Darth Maul, yeah. or they might have seen him once or twice, they'll be like, "Do I know that guy? Oh wait, he's a Sith." But yeah, it's, 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 like, it's the disinformation so, reminding yeah, people. It's like so, the dice. It's so he's the big bad of the Tans movies. Yeah. No, it's the it's the uh, it's the it's dice so, thing all over again. Yeah, it's so hand holding, like. But his appearance is just shouldn't be in the film. Again, this, this is not a Han Solo Look, film. Yeah. It's a generic I understand. Film. I kind of understand why they did that, though. Because yeah. I know that they're really trying to force this movie as being a part of the larger new canon. Yeah. It's like Rebels and so but, on. And that's, that's another thing I want to talk about, is they're trying to tie it in with the, you know, the Clone Wars and Rebels cartoon you know, CG series and stuff that's still technically canon. They're trying to tie it into that. And again, it feels like Marvel, you know, D- Disney fired. Like they're trying, and they're, they're, it, it felt like sequel bait. They're trying to set up the Obi Wan film. They're trying to set up the Boba Fett. If we film. have to have Darth Maul, I'd rather it be that April Fool's prank. Remember that Darth yeah. Maul Netflix original prank? Yeah, that was awesome. Oh no, I, it looked really I, dark. I think, yeah, uh, they, they did. I think Netflix did like an April Fool's yeah. prank trailer for a Darth Maul, a series like, of Darth Maul Netflix. I, I, I think, amazing. like, I'm not like. I, you know, I like Darth Maul. Like he looks cool. You know, he's got he's got a cool lightsaber, whatever. But like he died, let it go. And I know Rebel. You know, I know Rebels fans really like him, and and that was fine for that show. But I'm like, now they're trying to put it back into the the movies, and it just and look, you I'm know, just the, like just let it go. Again, it's another prequel problem. The problem with Rebels, and my knowledge of Rebels is inadequate. Yeah, but from what I understand. A lot of crazy stuff happens in Rebels. So are we yeah. are we now saying that Rebels is cinematic canon? Because well, that's, that's dangerous. That's the thing is like uh, you it's know because spo- spoiler spoiler for Rebels. Uh, maybe skip ahead 20, 20, 30 seconds. But spoiler for Rebels. But at the end of Rebels, Obi Wan uh, Darth Maul faces down with old, old Obi Wan on Tatooine, and Obi Wan kills him. So if Rebels is still technically canon in this new movie universe, does that mean Darth Maul cannot die and that he has to die in that Rebels episode, like in the timeline? I'm assuming. So if when the, does if Rebels they do, take place? A few years before A New Hope, maybe three. So so assuming that Darth Maul is going gonna, is gonna to show up in the Obi-Wan movie, like are they going to redo that show, exact showdown from Rebels, or are they going to change it and say, "Oh, the canon's just a bit different between the cartoon"? But they'll change it. Disney won't care. It, exactly. If it's like, it, it, I don't know what they're trying to do. Um, and again, this is what I want to talk about at the beginning when I was saying this universe feels so small because mm-hmm. everyone knows each other. Everyone, everything's tied into each other uh, to, uh, to everything. The prequels, the new movies, the original trilogy, everyone knows each other, everyone's from the same systems, everyone you know, knows the same people. It just feels very small. We don't get anything new. We don't see... I want, I want a Star Wars movie about just a random guy on a random planet who never comes into contact with the Force, never has, sees a lightsaber, n- you know, nothing like that at all. Well, th- this is going to run us into an interesting predicament if they make more. Yeah. Because we know that Darth Sith is possibly going to be the bad guy of the following movies, like yeah. the overall bad guy. Coming into episode four, Han Solo is very skeptical uh, skeptical on the existence of the Force and the Jedi and itself. Th- that's the thing. So he's like, they don't exist, blah, blah, yeah, blah. But, so are we going to see, possibly are we going to see if, any interaction if they between do, Han if and they the Sith? Do, I'm pretty sure the only reason they're doing Darth Maul here is so they can set up the Obi-Wan movie mm-hmm. and not so that they, they can set up Han Solo 2. Because, yeah. like, and that's that's the thing. It's like, why am I seeing sequel bait to a to a, you know another movie 
and again, it ties into like these are Disney movies. They're Marvel movies now. They're not Star mm-hmm. Wars movies. It's just like, you know, it, it's it's an end credit teaser for another unrelated movie. But yeah, I feel like they're running the risk now of contradicting Episode Four. Yeah, they but, won't care. Uh, and and <laughs> as as Disney has shown that I don't think they care. Um, so we're running out of time, but I'll do a few like nitpicky things that I wanted to talk about. So Beckett betrays Han. Couldn't care less. Um, Woody Harrelson's character Beckett like does nothing for most of the movie. Betrays him, and uh, you know they're like you know doing a standoff. They could have done a really cool western style duel, you know, but they don't do that because this movie sucks. Um, Beckett has a blaster pointed at Han, or no, he's about to shoot at Han, and Han shoots first, but it's off screen. Like I turned to Nathan and I said, "Who shot him?" And Nathan was like, I'm not sure. And I said, is Lando behind him? Is Lando coming back to save I, him? I also initially thought somebody shot him from yeah. behind. And, 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 then, and then the scene kept going and going. And then Beckett was like lying, dying on the floor. And I'm like, Nate, I'm like to Nathan, I'm like, who was it? And Nathan's like, I'm pretty sure it was Han. I'm like, they, they literally like cut it out of the frame. So you don't see him shoot first. It's very strange. And that would have been such an important shot. For the character to, you know, like that kind of I mean, shoot first thing, especially with all the drama over yeah. the years. And it, it also would have been better if Beckett was a better character and actually had any emotional investment in this. Would have been cool if Han actually got wounded by Beckett and he says, the lesson is to always shoot first. <laughs> that would have been two on the nose, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, someone at Disney has a tentacle fetish. Because every one of these new Star Wars movies has had but a yet there's no Twi'leks. Yeah, but that's what I saw in the cinema. But I don't see any there's no, Twi'leks. There's no Twi'leks, but it's just there's there's tentacles everywhere. They're disgusting. Like Rogue One had that stupid mind reading monster that didn't even need to be in the movie. Like I'm pretty sure someone has a pretty big fetish. Also, when the uh, tentacle mo- monster came out of the black hole, I was like, "Is that Cthulhu?" <laughs> yeah. Tentacle monsters coming out of black hole. <laughs> Best crossover ever. H.P. Lovecraft doing Star Wars. I, mean, I, I remember like talking about uh, shit aliens they have in this in this movie. I remember laughing when there's like they're in that sort of the um, the Crimson Dawn sort of like casino ish base type thing going on. Yeah. And there's that like that lounge singer. <laughs> oh, that was that's that there's, a, there's a, like, it's like a that little male fish voice head. like a oh. fish You see, this I hate what I hate about what I had about the new Star Wars. <laughs> just like, what? What I had about the new Star Wars movies, and Han Solo has this problem as well, is that they, they definitely try to do the practical aliens, and I give them props for that. But I think their idea of practical aliens is making, is making the stupidest Muppet-type crap ever. And why do all the aliens in this new Star Wars, these new Star Wars movies have, like, Cockney accents? <laughs> like, in the original movies, except for Yoda, Admiral Akbar, I think that's it, maybe I'm forgetting, none of the aliens speak English. I might be forgetting, but I'm pretty sure that they're all subtitled or they speak in another language and they're not subtitled. In the new movies, they're all, like, Cockney-accented fishbowl men... And I'm just like, this is stupid. These movies are stupid. They feel like very Muppety. And then on top of that, you've got really stupid CGI characters flop, flip and flopping around, which look like crap as well. So, you know, I don't really understand what they're doing there. Um, and, and in tying into that stupid, you know, CGI crappy alien thing is that one of uh, Beckett's crew is like a four-armed monkey man played by John Favreau of all people. And I think the only reason he played that role is because he's developing a new live action TV series, Star Wars TV series for Disney. And uh yeah, I don't I don't know how that's going to turn out, but I'm I'm not uh, holding my breath. But yeah, so apparently that this is this is this is what what this is what kind of pains me is you know, I I'm not excited for Star Wars anymore. I don't think it's going to be good. I'm kind of over it. But then they announced the Boba Fett movie, which I knew that I knew that was happening. Boba Fett, of course, my favorite character. He's really cool. And I'm like, oh, this movie's going to suck, right? James Mangold is writing and directing it. He did Logan. And now I'm like, well, now I have hope. Can we make that a Western? And now and now I'm like, okay, are they going to make that a Western? Is that why they didn't make this one a Western? And so, is every movie going to push yeah, away yeah, yeah. what it should be? I'd, I'd love, I'd love for the Boba Fett movie to be like, like he loses all his gadgets it, it, and he's just like, he's just got a MacGyver, but, but, but he's got to survive. I want, I, want, I want them to do like a Judge Dread thing where he never takes off his helmet. Yeah, and you don't, cool. you don't know who, he, you never find out who he is. You never see. I mean, the prequels already ruined that. But just from, from my perspective, it's like you never see who he is. But here's another problem I have. Are they going to make him a Kiwi? 
Alum, you are you are the resident Kiwi, <laughs> and I'm going to badmouth them because they ruined Boba Fett in the prequels. Was his uh, actor a Kiwi? Was he? Yeah. So Is so uh, again <laughs> again again you know as if the prequels weren't bad enough and and you know had to tie into every single piece of the original trilogy it's like they show that Boba Fett's actually a clone of Jango Fett who is a Kiwi. It's nothing personal, bro. Yeah, it's just and, and so I'm like, head, and, and in, in the special editions, which I hate, they dubbed Boba Fett's cool, like raspy Clint Eastwood <laughs> voice with a Kiwi accent, <laughs> and it is embarrassingly bad. So if they do make a a, a Boba Fett movie, if they're going to stay in the actual canon. And the special editions and the prequels are canon. They have to make him a Kiwi, and I really hope they don't. I it's hope like they just the, throw that out and they're just like David he's American. Be- it's again. the David Beckham phenomenon. He looks cool, but you don't want to hear his voice. <laughs> what, is it, what does his Deadpool say? He, he looks like he uh, sounds like he mouth sexed a bottle he, of helium. He, yeah, like, like, but James Mangold though. Like, that guy's a really good filmmaker. So is uh, Ryan Johnson. Exactly. And, and so, like, <laughs> they, they keep getting me. They keep getting me. And I'm like, well, now I'm going to be ho- I'm hopeful. Who, who's again. next? Scorsese? Which, which, which director is going to be ruined next? Scorsese <sighs> making a Lando gangster movie? Oh, man. That Except great. it's terrible. It's just, <laughs> it's just Casino. Yeah, Gorillian <laughs> Cas- it's Casino. It's, called, it's just called Calrissian. Oh, man. <laughs> See, like, like, I know it's not going to be good, but now I have hope. Oh. Anyway, that's, how, that's how they get you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they've also they're doing the Obi Wan movie, which I think we've talked a little bit about before. But I'm, um, you know, I'm, you know, I don't think that's going to work out well. Obi Wan by Woody Allen. <laughs> that I'd like to a com- see. A comedy on Tatooine. <laughs> um, and of course, you know, everyone was hyping up Childish Landino, and he was fine. But I think you know he's still a fan favorite, and I think people want a Lando movie, so I think that's in the cards um, with with Donald Glover. So. Like these movies suck. Star Wars is not good anymore. It's not special anymore. There's no magic to it anymore. It's generic Disney Marvel crap. But it's like they keep they keep getting me excited. <laughs> like they keep get, there's a glimmer of hope, and I'm just like, damn it. Uh, but anyway, we're out of time. Uh, I'm so over it. It's a fun adventure movie. Go see it. <laughs> don't 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 waste your time and money. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm planning to to end up Man vs. Movies um, and replace it with another show. But even if we do end Man vs. Movies, I think we'll come back for a episode nine, Star Wars episode nine review, and and we'll post that. So even if I do end, you know, Man vs. Movies, and you don't see a new episode for for a year, I think we'll definitely have to to tie everything up with the with the trilogy and and see how that goes. Um, thank you, Nathan, Callum, and Alan for coming in. I appreciate it. Thank you for having um, us. We were very stressed for time, so I was kind of like r- rushing. I think we did quite well. Yeah, but I think I think I got through everything I wanted to get through. Um, thanks you to all the listeners. If there's any of you left, um, don't, keep, don't keep positive, James. Don't, keep positive. Don't rate, review, and subscribe on <laughs> iTunes. Don't like and share the Man vs. Movies Facebook page. But uh, yeah, just keep in mind if you do if you do actually listen to these Star Wars reviews, uh, keep an eye on the Man vs Movies things for the next year. And even if you don't see an update, Episode Nine will probably be uh, in the cards. So thank you, everyone. Stick around if you're listening live for Matt's show, Car Talk. And uh, shout out to Darren Doctor Rock, who's a big supporter of the show. I forget to mention him. He's he's a great supporter of the show. Thank you a lot, Doctor Rock. And yeah, that's it. Catch you later. We hope you enjoyed this special flashback episode. What you just heard was a re-upload of an old show. If you'd like to keep up with our current show, The Tuesday Review, please like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at TuesdayReviewAU, and rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes and Apple Podcasts. You can find The Tuesday Review wherever you listen to podcasts. Adios, cousins.